Again, it just tells the story of it's the evil and the um, the ugliness of people's hearts these days is everywhere. Good morning, everybody. So we're going to take, mm, sadly, one of the last looks at JLR. He, as far as uh, Sebastian Rogers goes, good Lord. I mean, they've scared everybody away. Now he's not willing to work with anybody as far as the Cajun Navy goes. So this is um, his update. This is in my personal opinion, a loss for um, Seth Rogers, Sebastian's dad. So let's take a look. Oh, this is, he's just streaming now. So let's take a look, guys. Come on in the search for, come on in. The search for Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers continues. JLR investigates got some new information I want to share with all of you. We're talking about this young man here been up in the um, Hendersonville, Tennessee area, uh, Mississippi area, Memphis area, Jackson, Tennessee area and areas all in between the last week. Bringing awareness to this young man. This young man needs to be found. There needs to be a resolution here. Authorities are working around the clock. Um, we're talking about Sumner County Sheriff's. We're talking about TBI. According to Chris Proudfoot, other agencies in other states have worked on this case, which is very interesting. Well, we do know that they did a search warrant at a landfill in Kentucky. So, yeah, he is leaving the area, heading back to Florida. He is um, basically done with the United Cajun Navy. If you follow him on Twitter, you've got a pretty good idea where his mindset is right now as far as they go but yeah he's heading back to florida and this is a loss to sebastian's family as far as i'm concerned lucky in reference to related to that dumpster area right by the prophet's house wondering if authorities are uh searching around the yogi bear campground uh there is a lot of chatter that prophets have fled their home and are staying at this uh, campground just south of uh, Memphis Horn Lake area of uh, Tennessee or uh, Mississippi. What, what's going on with that? But they actually, the prophets actually went on uh, television today. They went on mm -hmm. television. But I want to tell you something. A, tell. This is interesting, too. And I'm trying to get this person on. But a, a bartender, waitress bartender from Alabama has reached out to me and gave me a scoop on Proudfoot when Proudfoot was working down in Alabama at one point. Uh, uh, Proudfoot used to, Christopher Proudfoot used to go to uh, Texas Roadhouse to go eat while he was working, you know, while he was down there at the job, while his wife was in Tennessee. And I want to share some of that information, which is interesting. I see a lot of people in the chat. Come on in. We are keeping Sebastian's name out there. Um, I am in Georgia right now in route to uh, Florida. Um, I am not participating in any searches whatsoever conducted by the uh, United Cajun Navy. Uh, one thing I want to say to everybody is if you decide to search or if you want to search or if you want to make a difference out there, do not under any circumstances um, give your personal information to anyone. Anybody that asks you to sign something or provide your ID or provide you, you know, your email address or anything, do not. I repeat, do not give your personal information to anyone. Uh, you do not want to get your name on someone's list. Um, you know, you'll get all types of spamming and, and, and uh, uh, solicitations for donations and uh, bamboozled and, uh, you know, redirected to different places. You don't want to give your personal information to anyone. Proudfoot talked on Fox and Friends this morning. Proudfoot's talk to Fox and Friends this morning. And if you notice, looks like Katie is at one location 
and Christopher is at another location. Uh, they're trying to do serious uh, damage control here. Uh, they know the tables have turned on them. They have literally, they're in a corner here. Uh, no support whatsoever. No uh, friends and associates of Proudfoot that I'm told that are backing him. Um, pretty much the only people that are backing the Proudfoots at this point are Chris Proudfoot's parents. Doesn't seem like anyone openly wants anything to do with the Proudfoots right now. Um, you know what's interesting too, folks? We don't talk about Katie Proudfoot's mom. We don't talk about Katie Proudfoot's side of the family at all. And they haven't come out. You know, the, the, the her father has a Facebook account, doesn't have his photo on there, uh, Mr. Payne. And, uh, you know, he's trying to find his uh, grandson, he says. But no public support for Katie Proudfoot. Wonder why. Wonder why. Well, Katie Proudfoot's own mom is in big trouble with the law herself in Virginia. I don't know if you guys are aware of that. Uh, extensive history of all types of uh, crimes committed. It's kind of scary. Um, you know, if Sebastian was ever around, Katie Proudfoot's mother would be yikes, yikes, yikes. But I want to show you something. I'm spilling the tea. Look, this is the thumbnail of this video. We are spilling the tea. I want to share with you some correspondence I had with a bartender slash waitress from Alabama. And this person, I will not reveal their name, and you can, uh, you know, maybe look into this more yourself. Maybe this person is not telling the truth, but I find this person pretty credible in my eyes. I'm, I'm betting it around. Uh, says, just have some inside information. I'm a bartender at Ta Texas Road. So like I said, JLR is heading back to Florida. So as far as the United Cajun Navy goes, I don't know what they're up to, but it does not personally. I don't think it's looking good for them house in Alabama. For months, Chris was on a crane job site near Pelham, Alabama. He came into the restaurant several times a week, ordering the same thing, sat at the bar. He never drank alcohol, sweet tea, filet steak rare. <laughs> She's actually getting into specifics. Wanted his steak so rare it had to be cold. Claimed to have a disorder that he wasn't, uh, that didn't allow his body to digest meat unless it was raw. Good you guys Lord. know anything about that? No. Can Chris Proff would eat meat? Jesus. And uh, does it have to be raw? Real. He never would provide his name. And when asked for a name for his tab, he would always give random cartoon names like Mickey, Daffy, Goofy. Now, I thought this was kind of fake, but then I'm reading into this and it make, actually makes sense. Eventually, we labeled him as Scooby. And that's what he was known as moving forward. Chris spoke of his daughter in New Mexico that he may get to see twice a year along with a custody battle. There was a death in the family at some point around October or November. The mother had an illness, something serious. I think maybe a brain tumor. There were multiple conversations ongoing and a lot of insight to his personal life, but never a mention of his wife or stepson. None of us had any idea he was married. This man pursued me in a dating matter. Had I been interested, he would have gone that route. I texted him since seeing his face on the news and called him out on keeping his family a secret. He claims that they were separated at the time and doing much better now. What was the wedge in the marriage if there was an actual separation? What did it take to fix that marriage? Now, I believe this person. I'm going to try to get this person on. This is somebody has sent something, so... Can someone, if anyone knows the Proudfoots, and I know a lot of people, he didn't take a polygraph. Well, he says he didn't take a polygraph, which is interesting. If anyone knows anybody, folks, that knows the Proud, Chris Proudfoot, was he ever working in Pelham, Alabama as a crane operator? Now, it seems like Chris works these different job sites, like, you know, whatever contracts. I don't know what company he works for. But he was doing a crane operation job in Memphis, coincidentally staying right near there, might go back to that chain, uh, uh, crane job. And then So if that's the case, is he saying that they have even separated as far as where their location is? 
I don't know. Is there like trouble in paradise? Why is not at least one of them out there looking for Sebastian? These people are disturbing me. I was working at uh, Vanderbilt for a little bit. You know, took some assignments there. But the question is, if he was out and about alone, at, far away at these job sites, calling himself or, you know, well, they're calling him Scooby. We're like Scooby-Doo investigators and trying to investigate this case. We want to get some insight. So one of the messages I got from JLR said, um, <laughs> I found it interesting because he said, I guess they didn't do their due diligence and vet me. <laughs> it's like, it's true. It's true. I mean, if you know anything about JLR, um, if you go at him, he's coming at you. And he doesn't do it physically. He doesn't do it, but he's got contacts all over. His <laughs> He's growing. He is absolutely growing. And just like Dandy said, they poked the wrong bear. And like JLR said himself, they didn't do their due diligence. <laughs> about Chris, but it, when he's out on the road away from Katie, serious, if he's out on the road away from Katie, has he ever tried to hook up with other chicks? Behind Katie's back. Because it seems like this waitress says that Chris didn't say anything about his wife or his stepson. And I'm starting to think a minute. You know, Chris, you know, been in multiple marriages. He's been in multiple marriages. One right now in New Mexico does not want their child around Chris Proudfoot. There's no pictures of Chris Proudfoot at all with Sebastian. I'm just wondering, folks, if Proudfoot Chris was away from that house from the beginning of February all the way up to when Sebastian was reported missing by Chris, who called the sheriff's office while he was on three-way with Katie. I'm just wondering if, if Chris... Even though he's out there working, but I wonder what the relationship was like at the time. Mm -hmm. Do you think they possibly were separated and there was a friction between both of them and they were trying to patch things up or Chris was like, I'm not coming back home there until this situation or this is taken care of. Mm -hmm. Could that be what's going on here yep. with this? Like, yep. I'm not coming back until... You do something with Sebastian. Wow. I say this because it does not seem, based off me being on boots on the ground, based off what you guys put out there, based off what's in all in the Facebook groups, based off the relationship that we've heard, the, the description of Chris out of his own mouth, the belt incident, it doesn't seem like Chris and Sebastian loved each other. So if somebody... Had I was single for many years and my ex, if he had have gone anywhere near my child, I'd be, I'd be in the who scow because that's a no go. There is no way somebody who is not my son's biological parent that they're going to touch my child. It, it never would have happened. I probably would have turned into a little bit of a freak <laughs> at all. Doesn't seem like Chris wanted anything to do with Sebastian. Mom's going out on doing all these fun things with um, Sebastian the day before he reported missing. Some people are talking about the teacher Stouch. <laughs> she did something similar, right? Yeah. Giving a kid their last meal, giving their kid their last fun day. Because that's another thing, too. Does, does Katie, while Chris is far away, does Katie normally take Sebastian out? And do all these activities like she did on, on, on Sunday, the day before he went missing. Does Katie go and take this kid and give him the fun of his life? Going to out to eat, going to buy snacks, going to a uh, 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 bowling alley and recreation, hanging out with cousins and everything like that. Make a good old. Oh, absolutely dandy. Yeah, biological parent or not. My ex didn't touch my child as far as discipline. Didn't happen. But if I ever ran into a situation where anyone touched my child, anyone, 
Yeah, a different side of Frankie would come out, like not a nice one. All time, like they almost, she almost like tired him to death with all the activities. Big breakfasts in the morning. Does she normally do that? Or was she trying to do a Letitia Stotch type playbook here? Give the kid the last fun day of his life. Janine says it's all speculation. Absolutely. This is all mm -hmm. speculation. This is all speculation to try to get insight of who these people are. Because they portray themselves as certain things. But I see a lot of more nefarious bad things behind the scenes. Chris Proudfoot has clearly told all of us lies. Clearly. Why are they on Fox and Friends? Actually, I got the link here. By the way, we have a Facebook group. We are on this case. We're going to every meticulous detail. We have connections, folks, with neighbors, community members, people that know the Proudfoots personally, and we get the goods. We get different scoops. We get insight on who they are we get an idea where they're at people know where they're at and are watching the moves because you know there is some speculation that sebastian's alive and he's been being hid somewhere and they had a plan here and they don't know what to do with this plan there's a lot of theories with this wow situation but join this facebook group right here we got a great group we're growing we're almost at ten thousand members uh, every, almost every minute, you know, and it's just people, we allow people with all theory, speculation, thoughts, anyone can say things. And, and we, 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 we are on this case. We are on this case. Good. We're covering this. Let's see what, let's see what's said here. This is today. Barefoot with a flashlight. Joining us now, Sebastian Sandy and Chris Proudfoot. Um, Kenny and Chris, thanks so much for joining the program this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, Ms. Proudfoot, you, you come to the bed, um, you heard some noises in there, um, you told him to knock it off. You got up the next morning, and you haven't seen him since. Where do you think your son is right now? Honestly, I don't know where he is. Um, but now we haven't found any substantial evidence to locate where he's been or where he went. Um, that's why we're pleading for help for anyone out there that might know something or see something that could help us find him. Ms. Proudfoot, was Sebastian a runner? Did he have a history of running away from school or running away from home anytime before? No, he didn't have a history of running. Mr. Proudfoot, you're about, I think, three hours away, um, and then you got the call about what happened, and you made your way home. You agreed to the polygraph. You had been ruled as a suspect. What do you make of some of the criticism of some people online, some critics saying that they think that you're involved? Hmm. It's their personal opinion. Um, it's sad that people have resulted to this kind of rhetoric and, and verbiage and, and harassment but you know at the end of the day it's their opinion but the truth will come out and then when it does everybody will finally have their answers this prophet did, did your son sebastian have any friends that you think they have a cell phone uh had he made any type of contact hi brat not that we know of Ms. Proudfoot, you did decide to leave the home and you went to go see your husband, which I said is about three hours away. And some people have said that, you know, you have an autistic son who's missing. Why would you leave the home? Can you give us some insight on why? There are a few reasons. Um, we are posting flyers every direction we can, um, but at the same time, there were uh, quite a bit of, of people that were, you know, sending some very threatening and, and hateful messages to us. They're following us. They're driving past our house all hours of day and night, um, disturbing the neighborhood. And the neighborhood is very upset, concerned, and and people are worried about their safety at this point. So. Um, one of the reasons that I did that is in the hopes that if we left for a couple of days, that it might calm that down and give our neighbors a little bit of reprieve as well. A quick follow, Ms. Proudfoot. Uh, his biological father has said 
that he, he doesn't believe that he would have been barefoot because of a traumatic experience that he had stepping in a pile of ants. Do oh. you think he left barefoot? Why are you so confident that he didn't have any shoes on or anything like that? Because all of his shoes have been accounted for. Mm -hmm. Why is he talking for her? Um, as far as I know, all of our shoes have been accounted for, mine and my wife's at this point. So, I mean, there is no other answer. Um, he interrupted her. To, yeah. So I'm saying, yeah. I've been wearing at this point. Yeah. Um, Thank y'all so much for joining us on the program. Our number one concern is to get Sebastian home back to y'all. Um, we're going to put the number up for any, anyone that has any information. TBI fine. If you've seen Sebastian, call 1-800-TBI. That's the Tennessee Bureau of Investigation. TBI fine. Um, we'll put up the timeline. If you are in any of these areas, we hope that you'll reach out to the number. Katie and Chris, thanks so much for joining our program. So the Proudfoots are claiming they're handing out flyers. I haven't seen anyone hand out flyers. No Proudfoot hand out flyers at all, period. Uh, Proudfoot's, uh, you notice when uh, Lawrence there was asking Katie about the shoes, Chris, and, uh, you know, Katie was talking for a while, but when it came to the shoes, Chris seemed he interrupted her and kind of took over that that answer, which is interesting, right? It is. That's which what is I thought. Yeah, we're spilling the tea this morning. Uh, <laughs> we're trying to get an understanding. Uh, Proudfoot's are claiming that they're being harassed, threatened. We don't support anyone being threatened on JLR investigates. However, we do support people asking questions. Uh, we support people, uh, you know, trying to find out what happened to uh, this 15 year old boy. We support uh, people out there, you know, uh, trying to bring awareness to uh, this case. And, you know, people want answers. They, I don't, I don't know if the prophets realize this, but this is not going to go away. Uh, it's not going to go away, and I don't think it's going to get the case is going to get cold per se anytime soon. So, you know, I don't know what the profits have a, a plan of execution here. I don't know if the profits should just start going out there looking because the fact that there's they're not looking and they're not putting out anything else just fuels the speculation even more that they are involved. Uh, their actions make people feel like they're involved. Um, you know, they're not showing what. You know, but again, you know, everyone responds differently. Some people might say, well, that's, you know, that's how they respond. That's how people respond. But it doesn't seem like they have a plan of execution here or any idea what to do. They're, the perception is these guys are hiding things. The perception is there's a lot of trickery, deception here, and a lot of omitting things. And, and the storyline keeps changing. Narratives keep changing. And things don't make sense. Doesn't make sense, folks. Doesn't nope. make sense. So they were on. What's your take? Uh, that was a quick five minute clip. You know, you know, um, has authorities questioned Katie and Christopher Proudfoot separately? Separately. I know, like, uh, you know, Chris claims he didn't take a polygraph. Claim that uh, Katie did. Maybe they need to be separated here and in, 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 in talk to. Uh, for me, my curiosity is. The night before, I'm I'm curious about the night before. I'm curious about. We were doing a looking around here, and it is confirmed that they ate at Texas Roadhouse, which is about 15 minute drive from Katie's home, Stafford Court, and um, in Hendersonville, right? Because they live a little bit north of Hendersonville. What time did Katie Proudfoot? Sebastian, supposedly the two aunts and a cousin that she claims they went out to eat. What time did they leave Texas Roadhouse? What time did Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian, did they go leave Texas Roadhouse as a group? What time did they leave? That's important to know. And I say it's important to know what time they left because I also want to know what time did Katie Proudfoot return home? And you notice I only said Katie Proudfoot because I don't have any proof and see nothing besides chat, 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 chat. That Sebastian even came home. That even came home with Katie that night. But what time did they or Katie Proudfoot return home from Texas Roadhouse after going out to eat? Because it's 15 minutes away. So if there's surveillance or anything that will show that Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian or, or the group 
whether they left separately or whether they were all in a vehicle or what, the cousin, the two cousins in a, in a, a, a or the two nephew or the two aunts and a cousin, where'd they go? Or did they go directly home? What time did they leave Texas Roadhouse? Because another factor comes into play here, folks, and we discussed this. According to uh, you know, just Google, what time does the sun set in Henderson, Hendersonville, Tennessee? February 25th, what time does the sun set? And it will say about 544. I, I put out something that said 538 because, but I made it messed up because it was 538 for this year. We're talking 2024, about five, a little bit before 545. That's when the sun goes down. The sun goes down, right? 545. Now I'm thinking if you're going to go out to all these places and you're going to go bowling and then you're going to go out to eat, what time do you think they went out? What 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 time would you think you would have went out to dinner? What time do you think they went out to dinner? Because something tells me, something tells me when they're done this dinner, they're done this dinner, it has to be dark. It has to be past 6 p.m. People are saying four? You go to dinner at four? Did they go to dinner at four? Texas Roadhouse, you know, steak, whatever. What do you get at Texas Roadhouse? Most likely steak. I would say six that you would even just go to dinner, but you might go for an early dinner. But what time are you done? You're going in with, you're going in supposedly with people. She said it out of her own mouth on Nancy Grace. Who was the last, Nancy Grace asked, Nancy Grace asked Katie Proudfoot in her, in her mouth, Katie Proudfoot said, Nancy asked her, who was the last person besides you to see, see Sebastian alive? And Katie Proudfoot said, her, two aunts, a cousin, and the staff at the restaurant. Now, I'm told it's Texas Roadhouse. I don't know if you guys, you know, think it's somewhere else. There's rumors out there. It was Red Robin. I'm told it's Texas mm -hmm. Roadhouse. But you would think, if you're going in as a group like that, you're probably not going to be done eating to at least after 6. It gets dark 545. Now, let me add to that, folks, because Katie, Nancy Grace was pressing Katie on her interview about surveillance, neighbor surveillance, neighbor ring cameras around that house. And, and I remember Katie saying, when it gets dark, no one, no neighbors surveillance or ring cameras can pick anything up at their house when it gets dark. You can't see nothing. That's probably true. You know, your neighbors have a ring camera. You know, it's it's not like it's a lit up neighborhood like that. I don't even think they have sidewalks there. Do they have sidewalks? They might have sidewalks, but they, the homes are spread out. Nice home. So but even though he's heading out, he's still giving us lots of information. That Facebook group that he started was probably one of the best ideas ever because Facebook is still fairly popular and it still gets the messages out when needed. So 10,000 in that group, he said. Okay. So if Katie returned home after Texas Roadhouse, that I'm, assu I'm assuming it's after dark. How is anyone going to be able to see for sure if Sebastian really returned home? If, if now we're hearing about this taking out the trash thing. Once they got home, Sebastian takes out the trash. She said it. Katie said it. Even if Sebastian takes out the trash, no neighbor's going to even really pick that up either, right? Maybe, maybe not. She's claiming that neighbor's surveillance and ring camera can't pick nothing up at their home when it's dark. So what time did they return home from Texas Roadhouse? They went as a group? Had to go as a group because it looks like before that, that group, the group of people they were with were at the bowling alley. The fun and game place. Big place, big get place. But I'm sure investigators are it looking into because we heard from the beginning, the very first, the very first interview that the Proudfoots gave. You know, they were asked, the reporter asked the Proudfoots about the day before surveillance and the neighbor or the authorities were looking for surveillance and things the day before. And Chris was like, oh, we can't reveal that part of the investigation. Can't reveal that. So to me, 
I'm going, I'm trying to go the steps backwards moving forward. But this time for us on 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 what we have uncovered and what we talked to, I've I've spoke I listen, I speak to their neighbors. A lot of those neighbors like me and tell me things. A lot of the neighbors around there, a lot of the neighbors are also on edge. Katie's true. When Katie said the neighbors are on edge, that is that is true. There's people been around there that the neighbors don't like. That's what I've been told. The neighbors are on edge. People are going around the house. People are putting drones up in the sky. People are around there, driving around, filming neighbors' houses and things like that. You know, we we made a video. We just did a drive-by, but there's actually people around there. And I'm told the neighbors don't like that right now. They really don't. But there is neighbors that speak to me and, and, and talk to me. And I appreciate that because they care. They're not buying this bull BS that the Proudfoots are claiming. They're not buying it. But so far, the neighbors haven't seen the neighbors that I spoke to. I haven't seen any evidence of Sebastian returning home that night on the 25th. No evidence of any surveillance of seen of Sebastian being seen. No evidence of Sebastian taking the trash out. So now we get to the point where Katie, Katie describes these chain of events at that house. Thud after the fact, noise in the noise in the bedroom. Her going to bed at midnight, the waking up at 6 a.m., calling Chris within minutes. I don't believe her. I don't believe none of that. Nancy baited them into saying that there was a scent all the way to a retention pond. No authorities have ever said that. I think they're just trying to create these. A scenario that didn't even happen. Now, the question is, what I want to know is. If you ever get an opportunity to speak to Katie Proudfoot, or if you're a responsible journalist, if you're a responsible journalist out there, I am asking you, and you get the opportunity to speak to Proudfoot, you know, some of these media outlets are speaking to them. They just talk to Fox and Friends, talk to Nancy Grace. They've been speaking to some. Ask Katie Proudfoot what exact time she left Texas Roadhouse, and how did she return home? What route did she take home? From Texas Roadhouse. Did she make any stops in between? Did she stop for gas? Did she stop to a convenience store? Did they drop anybody off? Were they in the car alone? Who was with them? Where'd they go? And then ask Katie Proudfoot what time they returned home. She returned home. She claimed Sebastian. They returned home. What, <laughs> what time? What time did they return home? From this going out to eat. Because that will give me, you know, paint a picture. I wish I wish that neighborhood did have surveillance that could prove what time they got home. But I think that technology out there, the phones, would have investigators know. Investigators are like really, really tight-lipped on this. There is reports that EquiSearch <laughs> is working with investigators behind the scenes, searching places. EquiSearch is a really good organization. I, I like EquiSearch. Um, Tim Miller's group. I, I actually like their group. I think their group is legit. I personally think their group is legit. They do more organized with fashions, working with law enforcement. I like EquiSearch. Maybe EquiSearch will say they're doing a search. If EquiSearch, if EquiSearch says they're doing a search, uh, I would, I would, I would definitely, I, if I were you, I'd get involved if, Equ if EquiSearch said they're doing a search for sure. I get involved. There's a lot of, you know, what's going on now. Uh, Daily Mail actually has a re report out here. They put out, they put out this report right here. Daily Mail, it's nude. Sebastian Rogers' mom defends leaving town during search for autistic son. My husband has to go back to work and my son could be anywhere. Well, there is I, there is truth to that. I think Sebastian could be anywhere between Memphis or Mississippi. Anywhere between where Proudfoot stayed at those two trailer parks, trailers, RV parks, and all the way up to Hendersonville. I believe. I believe I believe Sebastian could be out there in between those routes somewhere. Cuz I'm not, you know, somebody also said something to me and which is interesting. We don't talk about the Proudfoot's motorcycles. 
You know, they have motorcycles. Did Chris have the motorcycle with him in Memphis with the RV? Does anyone know about motorcycles? Chris have motorcycle with him? These people are vicious. These YouTubers, these TikTokers are driving past. Yogi Bear, that's them. There's TikTokers driving past... Uh, I'm not even going to play. I'm not even going to play the music to that clip because it's like Scooby-Doo. It's like Scooby, Scooby-Doo. Where are you? Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's pretty Scooby, wild. Scooby-Dooby-Doo. Scooby, Scooby-Doo. Where are you? Um, we got some work because, you know, to do now. And the irony about being at a campsite when we come to the, the laundries, right? Remember Brian Laundry case? Which is wild. This is what I put out on my my Twitter account about the location from Texas Roadhouse to um, the Proudfoot's home. And by the way, they live north of Hendersonville. They live in a place called Shackle Island. But I put this tweet out and showed the distance. This is the distance. This is the distance between where Katie Proudfoot went out to eat with Sebastian in their group and the home. She returned home sometime. 15-minute drive. It's 5.3 miles. You got to go through these red lights and stuff like that. What about all that distance in between? So if it's a 15-minute drive, I said, what time did Katie Proudfoot and Sebastian leave Texas Roadhouse after they ate dinner on the 25th? And what time did they, they return home? About a 15-minute drive. Well, what about if it comes out that Katie Proudfoot left Texas Roadhouse at 6 p.m. and didn't return home to 7.30? What about something comes out with that? Like they, she leaves at 5.30 and doesn't come back home to 7 o'clock. Well, what does that mean? That means that Katie Proudfoot didn't go directly home from Texas Roadhouse. It's only 15 minutes away. So you got 20 minutes, then you know that she went right home. If you got more than that, she had to stop other places. We don't like omitting things on here. You know, lay out the timeline. Lay out the exact timeline. Chris Proudfoot should lay out his exact timeline. What he did all day on the 25th. What exactly did you do on 25th? Where did you, Chris Proudfoot, where did you wake up on the morning of the 25th of February? What did you do throughout the day on the 25th? What did you do? What time did Katie call you? On this phone call conversation they supposedly had up to, up to almost midnight. Guy asked ask the tough question. We're, we're, we're missing information. We're missing information here. We're missing information. So I hope a responsible journalist, a, a, you know, a creator, anyone that gets an opportunity to speak to the Proudfoots, Proudfoots might want to share their message. Ask these questions. Please ask them questions. They don't want to ask questions. They don't, you don't, you don't, tough questions they don't want to answer. They want to answer. They want softball stuff. Or they want to repeat stuff that we already know, like that narrative. No, she changes. She does change it up a little bit. I'm going off the assumption right there. I'm going off the assumption right now Sebastian didn't return home from going out to eat. That's where I'm at in this position now. I'm, I'm subject to change, but that's my my thought on the matter. You might have your own thoughts. You know, I, I think all that scent and all that stuff is smoke and mirrors. Smoke and mirrors. Trickery. Spilling the tea. Ah, delicious. All right, so I'm going to keep updated on this, you know, going to keep uh, monitoring the situation. If something develops, there was rumors that some authorities were at the school last night. There was a lot of pictures circulating on the Internet. I think there was that was nothing and nothing or definitely not related because we have I haven't heard anything else since that. But we care. We want to find Sebastian. Uh, you know, we don't want to be misled. Again, please, I am encouraging all of you, do not give your pers personal information to no volunteers or searchers for anything in reference to search. Be mindful of who you're searching with. Be mindful of private property and the objective here and the, and the motives behind any searches. Just be mindful. Um, you know, do your due diligence. Uh, please do your due diligence. We are monitoring if um, law enforcement are, you know, actually doing anything. Um, if they have anything planned so far, they don't. Maybe they have something brewing coming. 
Um, you know, maybe it's interesting that the prophets are claiming all these things are happening to them. Maybe if their facts are innocent, maybe if law enforcement should nip this in the butt and 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 say something and give a law, you know, give the public a kind of like, hey, these aren't the people, back off. But they haven't done that. Law enforcement has not done that. You would think, you know, like the, the, the prophets probably were complaining to law enforcement. Maybe they're not even talking to law enforcement. We don't even know if they lawyered up. I heard they did, but you would think that law enforcement would calm this down. Calm this down. If the prophets are claiming this, that, and the other is happening to them, law enforcement has an obligation if they're innocent or if they're if they feel like they're not involved to like kind of simmer it down. Hey, relax everyone, but they're not doing that. They're kind of just letting anyone do whatever they want. So that's interesting too. Keep mindful of that. JLR investigates sub to the channel, like hit the notification button. When more comes out, I will share with all of you. I am all my so way. So to- JLR is on the case, guys. Wow. Just wow. Let me check here. Okay. Awesome, P9. Awesome. I appreciate that. Good job, my friend. So the next live I'm doing, I'm going to actually bump up the time. If you're interested in uh, serial emmers, um, this is a Canadian one, and he is wah, <laughs> just wah. So subscribe, like, and share. Make sure you hit that uh, bell so you get notifications because. True crime never ends. It's an all day, 24 seven thing. All right. So let's see here. What's the reason they went out? Something that bothered me a lot is her. He had a real good day statement. There is so many things with these idiots. I mean, what? Yeah. His job was up in the air. That was what he said. And then they bolted because he had work. So I have no idea what that's all about. I'm finding a lot of contradictions in what they say. Okay, guys. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Great job, mods. I appreciate every one of you. And I'll see you really soon in the next one.